Hey kiddos! I hope you guys all enjoyed exploring museums, zoos, aquariums from, from all over the world yesterday. I know I sure did. Today we will be reading a few stories, a few books that you guys are already familiar with. So I hope you guys can again follow a little along and enjoy the stories. Our first book is called ABC Animals. And we've read this book a few times already. I hope you guys it's a little familiar to you. A is for alligator. He has many teeth. B is for butterfly sitting on a flower. Look at all those teeth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight teeth. C is for cat saying meow. D is for dog. He is saying bow wow. E is for elephant, spraying water. Do you guys remember what elephants' nose are called? Trunks. Good job. F is for frog, leaping from a log. G is for giraffe. He is very tall. Look how tall that giraffe is. Just as tall as a tree. H is for hippopotamus. Resting in the mud. I is for iguana, laying by the pool. Now that sounds nice, doesn't it? Laying by the pool. J is for jellyfish, swimming in the ocean. K is for koala, soft and cuddly. L is for llama, frolicking in the field. Look, the little koala is riding the llama. Isn't that silly? M is for moose, with very big antlers. N is for nanny goat. She plays on the hill. Look at the little nanny goat. She's eating daisies. O is for owl. He says, hoot. P is for panda. She munches bamboo. Look, she's chewing on that bamboo. So much bamboo. Q is for quail, hiding in the grass. R is for reindeer, dancing and prancing. Look, reindeer. Does anyone know the most famous reindeer? Rudolph, good job. S is for squirrel, playing in the tree. T is for toucan, with a lovely bright beak. Look how beautiful that toucan's beak is. It's yellow and orange and blue and purple and red. Beautiful. U is for unicorn, a mythical creature. V is for vulture, flying in the sky. Look how big that vulture is. Look at those wings. W is for whale, spouting water. X is for x-ray fish. You can see right through him. Look at those fish bones. You can see right through them. Y is for yak, grazing on grass. And Z is for zebra, with black and white stripes. I like zebras a lot. The End. Our next book that we're going to read is called The Children Who Love Books by Peter Carnivus. We read this book uh, some time ago in primary and I, it has a really good lesson at the end. So I hope you guys like it again. The Children Who Love Books. Agnes and Lucy didn't have very much. There's Agnes, he has the blonde hair, and Lucy, she has red hair. They didn't have a television. They didn't have a car. Look, they're playing make-believe television with a box. And the parents don't have a car, they have a bicycle. And they're, they're pulling them with a wagon. 
They didn't even have a house. Looks like they are living in a camper. Look outside too. But Agnes and Lucy had books, hundreds of them. Look at all of those books in their house. They must be really good readers. They were stacked here and piled there, balanced, propped, and shoved in all kinds of odd places. Look, there's some books that the kitty's sleeping on top. Books cluttered every corner of their home until one day, look, every corner of their home is filled with books. Let's see what happens. <gasps> their home could take no more. Look at all of those books just coming out, spilling out of the windows and the door. There's no more room. Let's see what happens next. The books had to go. Looks like dad piled all the books on the wagon. Let's see where he's, what's, what's gonna happen. Where is he taking them? But things were not the same. Bowl slid off of the table. Agnes couldn't reach the window. Looks like they had some books propped up on the table for the leg to, so the table could be balanced. And it looks like there's no more books here. So uh, Agnes can't climb up to see the window. And because there was more space in their home, there was a lot more space between them all. Whoa, look how far away they are. Dad's way over here. Mom's way over here. Agnes way over here. And Lucy's way over here. They're so far apart. Then one afternoon, something tumbled from Lucy's school bag. What's this? said Dad. A book, Lucy answered. From where? asked Mom. The library, Lucy replied. Mom and Dad looked at the book. They opened it. Dad read the first sentence out loud. Then the second. The children moved closer as Dad turned the page and read on. There's reading that book. Let's see. The light faded and the family moved inside. Dad reading all the way. They huddled beside the lamp and listened to the story. Look how nice and cozy and warm and together they are now. That night, as darkness fell upon the town, one small home shone brighter than any other. Look at everyone else has turned off all the lights and went to, went to sleep. But look, they're still up read, reading and reading and reading with the lights on. The next day, as the family yawned their good mornings, they were closer than ever before. With bleary eyes and full hearts, they rode through the clean morning air. Nobody had said a word, but Agnes and Lucy knew exactly where they were going. Where do you think they were going? Where, where were they going to? Hmm. Let's see. The library! Look, they went to the library to go get some more books. Agnes and Lucy didn't have very much, but they had all they would ever need. The end. That was a good book, wasn't it? I hope you guys all enjoyed today's stories, and I really hope to see you guys very, very soon again. I miss you guys a lot very much. Uh, I want you guys to have a great weekend, and I'll see you Monday.